The next thing we want to discuss is called the uh, nuclei. We probably need to actually look at these two things at the same time. So nuclei and the radio nuclei. The difference between the two is the radio nuclei is actually the species that's not stable. It's going to undergo a radio decay. Not every atoms are stable. So that's why we have the things called the nuclei and the radio nuclei. There are around 271 stable nuclei in nature. Do you know, just talk about how many atoms we have on our periodic table? 114, right? And here I tell you actually there are actually 271 nuclei. Because this is actually number including the isotopes. There are 271 stable nuclei. There are also many others is not stable. So those non-stable nuclei is going to undergo radioactive decays. If you have number of protons larger than 83, it will be radionuclei. Okay, that means actually it is not stable. And it's actually very easy to actually see why it is not stable. An atom is actually a very, very small particle, right? So how small is an atom? The size of a protein is 5 to 10 nanometers, 10 to the negative 9 meters. So one single protein probably composes more than 10,000 atoms. Okay, that means actually the average volume of one atom will fall within like femtometers or even smaller. Okay, so it's actually an extremely small particle. And inside a particle, you are going to throw in 83 protons. So proton is actually a positively charged species. So we know when you put the positively charged species together, they repulse each other, right? Okay, now think about, okay, you have an atom, so small. You have 83 protons inside. In principle, it should not exist. But okay, we do see the atoms contains many, many protons. So in the high energy physics field, they create a term called the strong force. So they think these things can happen simply because in our atoms, there's actually a very special partner called neutrons. So they think the neutrons is actually the species that actually make all the things possible. Of course, we are not going to talk about the details. In this chapter, we're going to focus more about if you have a non-stable nuclei or radioactive nuclei, it's undergo decays. We want to actually learn about those decays. To make sense all of these decays, I want to actually introduce you one thing called the nuclear equation. These things will always, always be true. So assuming today you have atomic symbol X, Z, and A, it's undergo a radial decay. Then you produce S, B and U plus T, C and V. Assuming your atoms undergo a decay, produce some other species, let's call S and T. Then one thing that need to be always, always true is that A has to be the sum of B and C. Z has to be the sum of U and V. Okay, so this has to be true all the time when you write out this. Uh, equations. Okay, so let's actually step number one. Okay, with these things in mind, then we can start to talk about the type of decays you are going to see if your nuclei is actually not stable. The first type we are going to say is actually the alpha production. So let's type number one. When uh, atoms undergo an uh, alpha decay or alpha production, you will always, always see helium-2,4 appear. So helium-2,4 less specific species is so-called the alpha particle. It's something that you need to actually memorize. When every time you see okay, one atom undergo uh, alpha decay, that means in the product side, you're going to actually produce helium-2,4 species. Type number two, if today inside a uh, description you see okay, some atoms actually undergo a uh, beta production, that means it's going to produce uh, electrons on the product side. So these things is so-called the beta particle. So the electrons is actually so-called the beta particle. It actually carries negative one charge. 
And then the third type is actually so-called the gamma ray production. So every time you see this gamma ray production, you are going to produce the gamma radicals, which is this guy. You see a symbol of gamma, but that gamma doesn't actually contain any protons and it doesn't contain any mass. Okay, a very weird particle here, but it's an alpha particle. And then the very last one is so-called the positron production. Positron is show for positive electron. So positron is actually positive electrons. So its symbol will be, okay, you have this E, which is the same as the electron, but the charge instead of negative one, it becomes positive one. The mass number is actually zero. So these are the four different decay particles that you are going to see in this chapter. What you're going to get tested is that if today I say I have uranium 238 undergo a alpha decay, what will be the product? So that will be the question you're going to encounter. If today I have uranium 238 undergo a alpha production, from that description, you should be able to write this. That is actually your starting materials, right? And then you actually undergo a alpha decay. Therefore, you know on the product side, you're going to have helium-4. And then I'm actually asking you what are the things that remain. This will actually the answer you want to provide. And the way you figure out the answer is simply because you know the nuclear equations. So you know Let's focus on your atomic number or the proton number. So you know initially you have 92. Once you produce your alpha decay, then you know you already consume two protons. Therefore, you know the remaining protons has to be 90. So once you figure out, okay, the remaining proton is 90, then you go back to your periodic table. 90 is actually going to tell you, okay, you're going to have TH. So you know you can write TH 90. And the mass number, originally you have 238. You know proton is going to use up 4. Therefore, you know your mass number will simply equals to 238 minus 4, that's 234. Therefore, you can figure out this answer.